the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for July 15th. Well, we're back to that familiar picture of no active tropical cyclones to remnants, ghosts of cyclones it still exist in the eastern Pacific. The remnants of Christina and the remnants of 6E, which didn't last very long at all as a tropical depression. It's gone. Day 45 of Atlantic hurricane season. We've still got that 10% area of interest. Uh, maybe a little bit hopeful on that one, but uh, we've still got it designated for the time being. The Atlantic's fairly quiet. The East Pacific, we've got a 20% behind those two remnants, um, but that doesn't look like it's going to materialize, at least for the next few days. So a quiet phase in the National Hurricane Center zones. In the Western Pacific, we've marked three areas, all of them on low chances though. 10% over the Philippines for short range, 20% medium range, and 10% in the medium range as well in the east. In the Southern Hemisphere though, we've got a 50% chance of this area of interest in the Tasman Sea that it could become a deep subtropical cyclone over the next few days. Currently extra tropical though, so we'll continue to monitor that one very closely. The Atlantic looking like this, you can see a new wave coming off the coast of Africa. That could also get a 10% tag in the next 24 hours, but at the moment we're not uh, anticipating anything from that one. You never know though, uh, but that's all we've got right now. The Gulf of Mexico looking fairly quiet, Florida brewing up some thunderstorms there, as is the tip of Cuba. The Eastern Pacific, you can see what's left of Christina still, still quite prominent actually, and models think it will remain so for the next day or two. Usually they die off pretty quickly. 6E I don't think is going to last much longer though as a recognisable entity at all, and that 20% area further east not yet visible, but it will form, if it was to do it with the 20%, it would be in that area. The Western Pacific, we're looking at those areas as well. So if that 10% over the Philippines was to form, it would be from that wave that's just just about to move through right now. Low chance on that. 20% for something that might develop just outside to the southeast of that round circle. Oval even and that 10% further east. Also the remnants of Carina there over Taiwan. The South Pacific, you can see that extratropical cyclone, a rather deep one, pressure in the 970s, delivering massive amounts of convection or rainfall over New Zealand at the moment, and the Indian Ocean looking uh, the typical pattern monsoonal over central India and over towards the southern part of the peninsula. Sea surface temperatures then are continuing to warm up just a little bit more in the eastern Pacific. Already though a bit of a cool pool for where those two uh, tropical cyclones have been. The Gulf of California looking very warm as is the coast of uh, Oaxaca in Mexico. The Gulf of Mexico really warming up and the eastern side, the Atlantic off the coast of Florida, very warm there as well, 30 degrees plus. The Gulf temps really warming up and is the Gulf Stream as well. Out towards the main development region looking pretty good as well, 26 degrees Celsius out to the same longitude as the uh, Lesser Antilles. The Indian Ocean uh, is around the same as it's been, a little bit cooler now in the Arabian Sea but the Bay of Bengal remaining warm. The Western Pacific, that hot pocket still there off the northwestern part of the Philippines, the hottest place in the basin and one of the hottest anomalies as well. Same too for the uh, coast off uh, Hainan in the uh, Gulf of Tonkin. Uh, 29 to 30 degrees Celsius waters, more than that actually, 30 to 31 degrees there. And these are the anomalies, and you can see there the Western Pacific, much warmer than the Eastern Pacific compared to average. The Atlantic as well, throughout the whole of the tropical zone there, it is above average in some places considerably. I don't think we've ever had a year that's had so much heat potential across the board in the Atlantic Basin. On July 15th, 1989, we had Tropical Storm Hurricane Delilia, actually as well as Typhoon Gordon, which was a Category 5 on this day, 175 miles per hour according to Force 13's analysis, and Tropical Depression 9W had just formed as well in the Western Pacific. By our estimates, Gordon was a sub-900 millibar system, peaking with a pressure of 895 before slamming into Luzon as a Category 5 storm.
Well, next on the naming list in the Atlantic, we've had six storms already, would you believe? The next one would be Gonzalo. In the Eastern Pacific, the next name on the list is Douglas. In the Central Pacific, the next name on list one is Hone. Over in the Western Pacific, we're still waiting for that next storm. It would be called Sinlaku, followed by Hagapit. In the North Indian Ocean, the next name on list one is Gatti. In the Southern Hemisphere, I really doubt Australia will recognise any subtropical development that happens down in the Tasman Sea, but if it did form in the Australian region, the next name ought to be Imogen. If it was in the South Pacific, it would be Yolanda. And in the Southwest Indian Ocean, the first names on the new naming list are Alicia and Bongoyo. Check out our new look cyclone tracker on the Force 13 website for the latest up-to-date information. You can also find us, of course, on our YouTube channel, search Force 13, and also on Facebook and Twitter, Force 13 at Force 13 on Twitter for the latest updates. You can also help the project become even better by becoming an Ultimate Fan on YouTube. To see the full list of Ultimate Fan benefits and to join, visit youtube.com forward slash force 13 slash join. With a special thanks to our top supporters this month, You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force 13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.